So this has become one of my favorite methods to create static sites, which is using Next.js. I kind of actually like this framework, even though traditionally I am all around the place, PHP, Java, all around the place. But um, Next.js, it rocks when it comes to static site generation. And I just wanted to make a video about like how to quickly set it up and how am I doing using Next.js to create statically generated websites or, or normal blog or that kind of content heavy websites. But before we get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Hashin. People call me Hash because I'm in programming, that kind of stuff, hashtag. And I've been a software engineer for 20 years, recently mostly working as an architect these days software architect, uh, migrating stuff to AWS and that kind of stuff uh, based in London. But mostly I travel around. Travel, I have a YouTube channel. I own travel as well. I'm trying my hand in this tech arena as well because that's my what my trade is. So without, without further ado, let's get into it. Just a quick introduction about me. So what you do is you go to Google and look for Versal Blog Starter. So there's... Uh, Two of the reports that I actually use. This is the very sim the simplest one. What you need to do is you don't need to deploy to Vercel. You come down here, and copy this command here, then go to your terminal, create. Uh, just copy paste that command. So it just copies all the code from that repo, and yeah, just wait for that to finish. Once that is finished, all you need to do is to go to Block Starter app and you can just change this end, end here, rename the directory after. Then say npm run dev. You don't need to run npm install because it has already done it. Let me put here. And voila, you have a blog and everything. It's actually pretty neat. Uh, can probably customize this using uh, change the styles and everything which I am not very good at so I don't really mess with that kind of stuff usually but have a look at this uh, this is not the let's let's go through the code maybe a little bit and let me just see the all right let's have a look here so all the posts are here in the dynamic routing and hello world preview, all this stuff. These are MD file, markdown files, so you can use the front matter and you can use the uh, OG image if you have one. So put everything in public assets folder. That's where the all the images go. And you can put other things like author name and everything. You, just, you can you can customize it. All these things are processed in inside the app router in the post slug so basically what that means is that if you hit so let me click on this one of this actually so if you hit post and dynamic routing that is captured into that slug variable which is present in this params um, if you are already using next.js um, that should be apparent but if you're not and I'm not a very good next.js developer but I do ChatGPT, and that's how I learn. And I practically learn Next.js in like a couple of days using ChatGPT, just the basic bare minimum, and then built a couple of products like that. And that is pretty much it. But this is not the actual thing that I actually use. I use a different version of it, where in the post names are actually the the file names actually used with MDX, where you can actually import React components inside which is very handy because it kind of adds a little bit, uh, one more layer of dynamism, dynamism to the post. Uh, that one is actually a different repo. I'll show you that one as well. So that's actually, so if you go back to Vercel Google and say Vercel templates, And you can, this is actually really nice place for a lot of starter kit. They even have like a section, section for AI. So all the streaming and everything is actually done for you. It's pretty easy. Anyway, so 
if you go to the blog section, you can see the, this is the one that I am using actually. If you look at the guy who releases videos about Next.js on YouTube, he uses this one as well, I think, because his portfolio also looks like that. This is the one we just had a look at. There's a different one, so actually you can use content layer. You can you can even use it with WordPress, which I don't know how why anyone would do that. Photo blog. Uh, different astro micro, different layouts, different... There might be a couple of landing pages here as well if you are planning to do a uh, landing page for your SaaS app. And this is the one that I use, which works in my case, and Google loves it for some reason. It's very simple. And there's nothing much going on. There's nothing fancy going on. It's really nice. Let me just show you the same thing. Copy this command down here. Come back here and... wait for it to finish all right the same thing but this one actually recommends p and pm for some reason i'm just going to copy that in all right probably need to go into the directory not that one there you go so this is much more simplistic especially for backend developers and stuff like that so if you change the, your system setting to light, this will change it. I don't know how to do that. Maybe here, dark mode off. Yay, now it is light. So it adapts to your system setting, which is quite handy, I like it. So do that. Always very satisfying to watch something just work without doing much of work, any work. All right, so this is literally what I use for my product here, sponsor stream, which I should not be showing you because it looks very bad. I didn't know that this functionality worked uh, based on the system mode, so it's kind of bad. So let me just uh, switch that off pretty quick. I should probably change it very soon. I'm getting sales from this app, so uh, I should probably do that and if I uh, this is a hidden page actually just for SEO purposes if I go to resources and I have the all these pause here this is yeah you, you can see that this is a similar kind of layout here my portfolio I am wondering if that page also looks kind of weird Yeah, no, it's not so bad actually. Uh, yeah. So what you can do is you can actually import React. Come, on, let me change it back. I don't like it for some reason. Uh, you can add React widgets in it. A similar sort of structure. You have posts, but the main notable difference is that you have MDX at the end here, and static typing. You can do. Probably. Yeah, this is all the, this is a page that processes the page itself and uh, with the slug and this is a page that lists all the blog posts. So that is the idea of it. It's basically different slugs last month. I'm just passing in the date range and then creating the page over there. And last year, because this most common YouTube sponsors is a popular keyword. And just this is the filtering part. So instead of passing it as a filter variable, I'm just passing it as a uh, as part of the URL. And against, and when you build the next tab, these are generated as static pages. You can see that, how that works, if you do npm run build. For example, so you can see that here in generating static pages, collecting build traces, this is what it is doing. So if the statically static 
pre-rendered static HTML or even everything under blog. It's very fast. And so Google loves it. So that is what I'm that is why I actually like Next.js and I don't think I'm going back to WordPress anytime soon, especially as a programmer. A lot of things can be programmatically generated, especially in the age of AI. You can just, you know, do, uh, there are like research agents, open source research, ag research agents, they can actually, <laughs> like that feature. Um, open source research agents, um, which you can hook it up into AI models, so it does basically do the research and create the articles for you, which is another product that I'm building, which I will be showcasing very soon on this YouTube channel. And so that's it. Uh, leave a comment if you want to know anything more about this stuff, and I'll clear that up in the next video. This is how I am doing all the SEO for my new products, and look how many pages I have indexed in like a short period of time. I did literally create programmatically all these pages. That is 62,000 pages that Google has indexed. And uh, and those pages are not even like optimized. They are mostly AI generated, not straight out of AI though. There is some, there are some research agents and it's a whole another video about my SEO generation boards, agent system that I built. Um, that also uses Next.js and Python embedded in the Next.js app, which I'll talk in another video. But anyway, this is how I'm doing Next.js static site generation, or like to roll out ton of content. This is the website. It's an AI directory. So basically I'm creating the pages for all these tools and stuff like that using, well, yeah, there you go. These are all like pretty fast. These are all AI analyzed. And these are the pages that I generate. And that's why I like this Next.js setup so much. It's not the best, but it's actually very good for like getting started with, it's much easier than WordPress, I should say. Um, because I hate WordPress using WordPress. I have used WordPress in the past and it's only you have to set up all these plugins and stuff like that to optimize it. Whereas in Next.js, you have the image optimization and everything straight out of the box. And also it's actually very good at generating metadata programmatically because you don't have to add a bunch of additional uh, plugins, especially if you're a, like a programmer, you know, coding, you can just go into the code and change it in JavaScript rather than trying to fiddle around all the WordPress plugins. And in the end, you are left with a ton of WordPress plugins, which actually bloat the system. It's actually very lightweight because all these sites pages are statically generated as well, most of the time, mostly used ones. That's how I have set it up. There's a quick loading time which is very important when it comes to, not the most important, but it, it, it is important when it comes to getting ranked on Google. And I have actually ranked 62,000, so it's mainly a volume game at this point. And I am basically targeting all the long tail keywords. And if you look at my performance, I'm getting like, this is only three weeks old, so already got like 450, which is really good for a one person conversion rate. It is really good for a uh, site of this age. Well, not the best, but it's actually, I usually get like, I have another site which I do, I do it manually. Sponsor stream, that's like 54. This is three months old. <laughs> so you can see the potential of this. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of things that you can do with this static site, site generation. So I just wanted to quickly show you how to set it up. It's actually pretty easy. I just want to try Mm-hmm. <laughs>